Hey everybody, welcome to episode 100 of our React series. This has been absolutely insane, and if you are one of the few who made it through all the way from the beginning, congratulations. That's really impressive. Even I was struggling to get to the end here, but we're finally here, and this video is going to be nice because we'll finally take our application and deploy it to the internet for anybody to see. Now, this is just going to be the basics, so we'll get our application up, but you from there can then go add a custom domain, look into analytics, and all of that stuff as well. I often avoid doing videos on deploying software because it's very challenging to get right the first time. I used Vercel for this video, who created Next.js, and the process was so easy. So literally, we're going to have a site up in just a few minutes. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay? I just wanted to first say thank you to the sponsor of the end of this series. Are you looking for a file uploader that works well with React? FileStack covers everything from simple file uploading to image transformations. Check them out, I'll leave a link in the description. Now, if you have been following along, you might be thinking, oh, there's still so much to do, and you are right. There is a lot to do, some of these buttons don't work, and this is kind of just static data, but I think I got you guys going in the right direction. So we're going to be deploying this site, which will have a working customers page and a working orders page. And this is all going to be working from our MongoDB database, even in production, which will be nice because that'll then give us the ability, if we wanted, to change the database we're using locally from the database we're using in production. That way we're not accidentally messing with production data. So here's that same exact application, but now it's at a custom domain, and you can see it's working with that same data. So to get started, we're going to go to vercel.com, create an account, I just used my email, and when you get here, let's say we're at the home page, you can add a new project, or if you're on this page, just continue with GitHub. This will prompt you to connect to your GitHub account. I already did this once and I'm not gonna redo that process, but once you have this connected, you can see I did this literally 12 minutes ago. It's so fast to deploy. So you can go in here and you can configure which repositories you want them to have access to, which it should ask you this when you connect for the first time as well. So I selected the Caleb Curry slash React Next repository, which is the repository we've been using for the series. This will allow me to then select that repository from the import git repository section. So we'll hit import, it'll give it a name, most likely it'll just be whatever the repo name is, however I already have a project with that name so it looks like it appended some characters here. So let's go ahead and give this some really good name just to finish things off with. So we'll say subscribe. Next.js, and the important thing here, before you hit deploy, go into environment variables. If you remember, in our application, we defined a MongoDB connection string. We will want the database to have this because this file, this env local file, is not up in GitHub. So when it clones that repo, it's not going to have that file. So we'll need to place these values here. And these are things you don't want shared out there. So if you were to create a production database, you could put the environment variable here and not use them on your local machine, which will help protect your environment variables from getting exposed. So let's go hit ahead and hit add. That'll add that to the list. Notice I removed the equal sign. So basically that you can't just copy the whole thing here. This is the first part and then that's the second part. And then hit deploy. This is gonna take a few moments. Now this will be built with continuous integration and deployment. So when we create a new commit and push that to the main branch in our repo, it'll automatically redeploy that software. So if you're doing a lot of development, what I would recommend is committing to a separate branch. And then when you're ready to redeploy, merge that into main. That way you're not constantly releasing new versions of your site. If you're doing it for yourself, that's fine, but if you actually have a live site people are viewing, you'll probably wanna be a lot more careful. So what I'll do is I will just wait for this to finish, probably take a minute or two. It should give us a domain automatically, which I'm not really too concerned about. If you want something custom, I'm sure you can get one. All right, and we are back. Now what we can do is we can click this, it'll open our site. There is our application name. And they just append some random thing, .app. So you can take a look at this in the back end under new projects. So continue to dashboard. 
This will give you some more information about it. You can view logs and you can view domains. So if you wanted to add a new domain, this is how you would do that. I'm not gonna go through that process, but shouldn't be too bad. You can also go to get and change the production branch. So in theory, you could probably have a deployment off of a dev branch, and then you could have a main deployment on main. So you could test the deployment on dev before you merge it into main. And there's some other junk in here as well. Uh, I'm not gonna worry too much about all of that, but just wanted to show you some of the options. Now I wanna take a minute to go through an example process of how you might redeploy. Since we haven't really done much with Git when it comes to branches, I'll show you that now. So from within the terminal, you can say git branch. That's going to show all of your different branches. You'll most likely just have main if you've been following along. These are some of the ones I've been experimenting with as I've been testing out building stuff. So you can say git branch and then create a new branch. Let's say dev. And then that should show up in our list, but we're still on main. So you can say git checkout to switch to that branch. We're going to have the same git log, so the same history, but we can commit on top of this. So let's go ahead and go into, for example, deposits maybe. And you can see this recent deposits. Let's go ahead and change this to a more reasonable value like zero. And then we can get a quick summary of our changes with git status. You can see that's modified. We'll go ahead and add that and say git commit change deposit value. And now what we'll do is we'll say git push origin dev. So that's the branch and that will put that up in GitHub and we can create a new pull request, which is basically a request to merge that into main. Now we own the repo, so it doesn't really make any sense to ask for permission to merge, but this is still a good practice to do every time you want to merge something into main. So you can describe the summary, changed stuff, very good detailed description, and then we'll create that pull request. And then if you were working in a team, you know, you could have steps to require review or you could assign someone. And then we can merge this. So confirm merge, pull request successfully merged and closed. You can see this information in the deployments. I might have been a little eager to get that merged. It may be something that you want to ensure builds properly. So that worked fine. And then it will go into main and we'll be able to see those changes on the live site. All right, there we go. It's finally starting to build. We're not yet going to see that change, even though this here worked fine. All right, that's finally done. Now let's go to our site, do a quick refresh, and boom. So that's cool. So that is how you deploy a Next.js application. Pretty dang easy, not gonna lie. Pretty appreciative for Vercel and making that a piece of cake, as other websites I have a feeling wouldn't be quite as easy, like AW. Other than that, that's all I got for you guys. Stay tuned, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. I feel like I need a more elaborate conclusion. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching this series so far. We've laughed, we've cried. I've cried a lot making this, and it's just a memory that I will always cherish until, like, tomorrow when I start a new series. But until then, I'm so grateful for this opportunity, thankful for everybody watching. But most of all, I am thankful for those of you who subscribed and want to support this channel ongoing by slapping the subscribe and the notifications so you get noticed, not noticed, notified, although I notice you, you get notified of all upcoming videos in the future. This may or may not include an upcoming mini C++ series and a Node.js series. Ooh. I know that's what many of you wanted to hear, so stay tuned for that series. Hopefully we'll have that out next month. Thank you all so much for watching and be sure to subscribe. See you in the next one.